You're very welcome to the Woman to Woman Show here on Confident Women Ireland's YouTube channel with me, Roisin McLaren. The theme of this week's Woman to Woman Show is an Irish woman's story of cancer and how it transformed her life. Many women have their own stories of living and experiencing and thankfully surviving cancer. My guest today is another ordinary Irish woman who's doing extraordinary things. Irish author Celine O'Donovan, who hails from the village of Saltail in Galway, right on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean in the west of Ireland. Celine says moments of devastation visits everyone in life, whether it's grief, illness, loss, or some other trauma, no one escapes. Cancer has visited so many people's homes here in Ireland and worldwide. Cancer is one of the words we all dread to hear. Selena Donovan heard those very words when breast cancer knocked on her door in 2016. Selene says it brought her to a journey of self-discovery and transformed her life in ways that she never thought possible. Selene says as a survivor of breast cancer, she now sees it as a gift. Celine has 25 years working in sales and marketing, and Celine changed her career and has written and published two beautiful, very successful books. Celine is now helping and supporting others through her work as an author, public speaker, life coach, and holistic therapist. Celine says as she recovered, she was propelled in a new direction that she never thought she could find on her own. As I said, Celine has published two very successful books, The Tapestry of Life and Gifts from Devastation. Celine O'Donovan, you are most welcome to the Woman to Woman Show here on Confident Women Island. Thank you so much, Roisin. Delighted to be here. Well, Celine, I am really, really thrilled to have you on. As I said in my intro, you are another Irish woman, ordinary Irish woman doing extraordinary things, helping heal the people of Ireland through your work, through uh, cancer and through other areas of your work. So well, I would really like, want to talk about your books a wee bit later on and how wh what you are doing and how that you're doing it. Uh, but first of all, tell us about... The career change, because you started off with 25 years in sales and marketing. And as you said, that the cancer propelled you in a completely new direction in life. And could you start off by telling us a bit about who you are and what you do and why you do what you do? OK, um, well, thank you. You make me sound very old when I say 25 No, a very, years. very wise. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. But I suppose, it, I mean, I'll, I'll start with maybe when I was diagnosed with cancer and talk a little bit about my life before and maybe what changed. Yeah. Because when I start talking about it, you know, you can go in lots of different directions and, you, you know, feel free to interrupt and, and, and ask me any questions um, on that. But yeah, so 2016, February 11th was the day I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So that's six years ago, which um, sometimes it's hard to believe, you know, so much has changed in such a good way. Um, but just to paint a picture before I had had the diagnosis, uh, as you said, I worked in marketing. I was living in Dublin for many years. I worked in AIB, AIB marketing. I traveled a bit initially. Sorry, that, no, I did travel a little bit with my job. I got married. My marriage broke down. That's another story. But basically, I suppose that to me was a trigger of where my life really started to come undone. Now, I think as a child, I was very sensitive anyways. I, like all children, like all of us, we learn our coping mechanisms in life so that we get the love and support and everything that we need. And I didn't understand any of this at the time. So I suppose I developed a certain way of being, which is where I really suppressed a lot. I think that started very young in my life. Suppression would be the overall world word I would use to describe a pattern in my life. So I then, after my marriage broke down, I went, I lived in Greece. I did a Shirley Valentine and ran away for a year, a coping mechanism. I then returned to Galway to my home got a job here in the university, had a job I loved for 10 years on the roads of Ireland, going out to schools, talking to leaving cert students about going to college. So a passion and a love started there that I didn't really know 
was in me and it still is about working with young people and teenagers and really helping them realize their own potential and follow their hearts and but that job started to feel quite limiting because I felt I was talking obviously I was working for a university so what you're talking about is going to college but there were a number of things going on in the background I'd say I still hadn't dealt with my marriage breakdown I was still dealing with life through suppressing emotions and who I was um, I was quite a sensitive person and picking up on a lot around me, which again, I didn't understand. I probably didn't deal with a lot of those issues. I fell into addiction, anxiety, depression. Now these were all, you know, when we hear that it sounds, oh my God, you know, was she on the streets? But I was functioning like we all are. And I had my mask on. I kept going, 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 going. And I had a car accident in 2014. So in the midst of all this, a job I loved, but I was getting burnt out. And I could feel that around 2012, things started to change. Things changed in the environment at work. They became more challenging, more toxic, I would say. I'm not a fan of using that word, but it's the only way to describe what was happening. I didn't understand it. So I had a car accident in 2014. I literally was on my way to a school in Kerry. I'll never forget it, in Trilly, November 2014. Really stressed. I remember the level of anxiety in the car. I was so overwhelmed at work. Somebody had left. So all of this was going on. And I remember five minutes from the doorstep of the school in Trilly, I turned to look um, on the sidewalk and the, on the path and I saw a woman wheeling a buggy. And I just thought, oh, if I could be her, it was just like if I could just stop for a minute. And I turned and I hit a car just stopped at a pedestrian crossing and I went bang straight into the back of it. Now, I wasn't going too fast, but literally everything came to a standstill now I wasn't hugely injured they weren't hugely injured but between the jigs of the reels that's a whole other story a beautiful couple they were angels really came in and rescued me and looked after me that afternoon I got home to Galway and I I would say I had a little bit of some sort of a breakdown or something a switch tripped in my brain because I literally couldn't function for a month if someone rang me on the phone it was like a fizzing noise and um, I was on adrenaline for a few days and then I just crashed and I went to the doctor. So I was off work for a month. So you could say that was a big wake up call, yeah. but I didn't know what to do. And I'm sure many of the listeners or viewers can see, but I'm in this system. How, what do I do? I have to live. I have to survive. So I went back into work, worked even harder. To, you know, if I do more, this was a pattern has been a pattern of my life. If I do more, I am OK. I'm safe. I'm accepted, all of that. So I, that's what I did. And then bang, a year and a half later, I get the diagnosis and that crept up. Now, again, as I say, I, I applied for a lot of different jobs in the interim because I knew I need to change, but the answer wasn't in another job there. And deep down, I knew that we always know. But I woke up one morning at a weekend, I was reading a book, this is how the I noticed um, and I my, my hit off a lump in my right breast. That's how I, you know, I came to notice something was off. I didn't I didn't feel more unwell than I had other than being exhausted and burnt out. Yeah. Um, and then I ignored it for a few weeks. I was traveling again with work in Clonmel and Tipperary. And I said it to a friend, a colleague at work. And she said, look, go to the doctor, Celine. It's probably nothing probably a cyst but no harm to get it checked out and I knew deep down it wasn't a cyst I knew I knew it was more and um, because it wasn't painful but she was sent to me to nudge me to make that phone call and I did and I was in my GP back in Galway the next day had a check up referred to breast check and within a week I got the diagnosis so I suppose that'll that brings us up to the diagnosis yeah yes so uh that was a big um it was obviously a shock it all happened very quickly um I went from a mammogram to a biopsy and I knew um they injected the needle sort of in the lump in the breast but then they also went under my arm and I went oh god this is this is serious because it had gone into my lymph nodes as well um and very quickly, as they do, and they have to do, it's the only way to give bad news. There's no easy way. I was brought into a room and the consultants 
told me, look, we have to get the results, but I've seen, you know, I've years of doing this and it is breast cancer. And he just said, look, you'll be fine. It's a year out of your life. And, you know, chemotherapy, surgery, radiotherapy. I always say it was the year I started living, which I didn't feel like that at the time. But that's what happened. And the biggest surprise to me, Roisin, was once I got over the shock and I went home and I was living alone at the time in Galway. And once I got into the whole sort of rhythm of treatment, which was so, so difficult, at the same time, I felt relief because I could stop for the first time in my life. This is what it felt like to me. Now, I'm very careful to say I wasn't relieved I had cancer. I don't wish that on anyone. It's a very, very difficult way. Well, for me, all I can say in my experience, um, because for me, everything is connected mind, body, spirit. And it was the first time my life made sense because life hadn't made sense. So here was an illness that was showing me how out of balance I had become. And I knew it deep down. So I was able to say, OK, thankfully, there's not something wrong with me other than, you know, what I've sensed about my life is right. You know, it didn't have meaning. It didn't have fulfillment anymore. It was too fast. It there was so many things that just I knew were not how I was meant to live. So that was the relief um, of getting the news. And then I went through the treatment for a year. Will I continue just while I continue on with the story yeah. now? Just I don't I don't want to keep talking if you want no, to jump in. Yeah. yeah. It's what I'm hearing is, you know, you you said that you when your marriage broke down, you went to Greece, you came back, you got really into work. And as you say, even on your website, that you bet you buried through the through the feelings and you just pushed through. And then when you were going down to Tralee and at the accident, just before the accident, you just wished you could just be stop. Yeah. And the accident just stopped you there and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. it just stopped you. Yeah. And then when you think of it, then the cancer has stopped, the cancer diagnosis and living with the cancer stopped you. Yes. And was this, which I'm anticipating was through your books and your website and talking to you, that the cancer maybe stopped you bearing your feelings and be just pushing through that you felt it to heal it. Yeah, absolutely. And it had to be something bigger. This now in my case, because as you said there, I had the accident. And and I think this is the key for anyone listening. It's been one of the keys for me is that unfortunately, as human beings, when life just continues on as normal, you know, when we're in a sort of a comfort zone, sort of a comfort zone, like I was sort of in a comfort zone, we don't change. We need, as they call it, friction. We need chaos out of nearly destruction comes sort of growth. And, yeah. and that is why we are here. That is how I understand I am here. I'm here to grow. I'm here to evolve. I'm here to remember who I am. And we all are. We are amazing, unlimited beings of great potential now i'm not saying i've realized it but i've i've woken up to the realization that this is the journey of life for me as i understand it so sometimes it does take because i knew with the car accident but it's difficult because as we all know we're living within yeah. these systems that are so we're so entrenched in and our families and our ancestors and all of the systems we are in are, and I believe we're at a time when that's changing, but that's a, a separate topic. But that was part of my, I suppose, what had to happen to me. So it's not easy to break. And I admire anyone who does it without having to go through what I did, but or something difficult. But that is often the trigger for us to grow. We have to, we sort of catapult us out of our normal existence and the discomfort of that and the breakdown. And I talk about cancer as being, it was a breakdown, but it was a breaking open is the only way. It's a way I found to explain or articulate what was ha what happened. And it's only now years later and in my book, I, I was able to sort of really process that and understand it. So in my time, as I said, the car accident was too short, you know, having had years of being conditioned, let's say, I it wasn't enough, but it was a bit of a little spark. 
Um, and then cancer gave me a much, and I'm, that's why I'm grateful for it, as difficult as it was. You're grateful was, for the cancer? Yeah. I would go to, I said, to, I wrote it in the book. If you gave me a choice to live my life a, the year prior to cancer or the year of cancer, I would pick the year of cancer every time because it was when the greatest transformation happened. Was and, it when you, you, you stopped and you, you, you centered yourself? And you yeah. connected and it, to your mind, body and your spirit and, and who you were. Yeah. And it wasn't conscious, you know, I mean, yeah. someone might say, how could you with all of this and the treatment? But how I understand the only way I call it grace, something greater took over and I was ready. And I think there is a time for each of us a letting go. And I because we're always trying to control yeah. life. The system has us, you know, oh, my God, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to pay the bills. You've got to work here. You've got to be there for this person. And we sort of put all of our attention and our energy and our power to the outer world. And that's been the big shift for me. So without knowing all of that stopped, the actual process of going through treatment physically stopped my body. I was lying on the couch a lot for weeks during chemotherapy. It took my mind longer, but my mind eventually slowed because, again, the effect of the drugs probably um, just I couldn't think in the way I did. And I even since the accident, something's rewired is the only way I can say. So everything stopped. So all these outer stimulants and my body and my mind stopped and everything just went quiet. And I noticed the my house changed. I've said this to people, the energy in my house changed. I never liked my house before because I had been very unhappy when I moved in there and very still sort of, um, I suppose, traumatized after my marriage breakdown and everything. But the energy started to shift. And that's when I say the breaking open. I literally took one day I was driving to treatment and I remember going, I took my hands, well, I sort of metaphorically took my hands off the steering wheel and just said, okay, I can't do this. I can't keep everything in the air anymore. And that's right. when everything started to change. So, you know, I'm a big believer and we have a choice and it isn't, it isn't about doing, it's about undoing. So just when I let go, I, this is how I, I, I couldn't have maybe explained this before, but now in the aftermath, it's something greater took over. And whatever you want to call that in your life, it can be God, the universe, nature, spirit. You know, some people may not even identify it in that way, but there is a greater force in, in the world and nobody can deny that. You just yeah. have to look at nature, look at a flower, look at a plant. That's what I say to people. You know, if you really believe you're in control of what's going on, um, you know, and I had to learn that. So, you know, that, that what a gift, even that alone. Um, changed everything so you talked yeah. about letting go and we all know sometimes we just got to let go and let go of the outcome and let go of being in control because yeah. you said we're not in control you know we, we might think we're in control of an awful lot of things in our lives and have our lives planned out but as you say we're not in control and you say, and like the gift of devastation is about your book. We'll talk about your book in a moment, but the gift of the devastation of being told that you had cancer. Tell us about that very moment when your, your consultant in, in the room told you you had cancer. What was going through your mind and your body at that time? <laughs> Well, I can tell you the first reaction, sorry, not to laugh, no, but uh, what uh, the first reaction I'll say when he said the words were, oh my God, I'm going to lose my hair. I remember. Yeah. Well, woman, talked, well, women. Yeah, yeah. And what else can you relate to? I've no yeah. frame of reference. Like it was, it was an out of body experience. I say it in the book because I just to, to, to go back a little, a minute or two before I got the news, I had arranged to meet someone for lunch that day, a good friend I had got to know through work. And that all was divinely orchestrated as everything is as you start to see. So I was sitting in the dressing room after the mammogram, waiting for the biopsy going, oh my God, I said I'd meet her for lunch. And, and I was still in this sort of, you know, it's only a biopsy and I texted her and she told me afterwards, she knew, you know, she does sense when I said I'm going for a biopsy, I'll be a little bit late for lunch. I was still in this, you know, I've got to get out of here. It's just and, like matter of fact. And yeah. it was like facts. Oh yeah, 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 was I like, wasn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was and like then, being factual and being, you know, 
biopsy, yeah. next appointment. and Yeah, well, I was, I'd been in that mode, skimming yeah. along the surface of life. So then I was called, I just remember I got dressed after the biopsy. I was late to meet her. And the nurse said to me, um, oh, will you come in and have a cup of tea? And I was still sort of, you know, deluded, I suppose, going, what was she asking me for tea? I, I have an appointment. <laughs> so I went in and sat down. And then I realised, oh, God, what's going on here? And then the consultant appeared and a load of students, medical students, and they were all looking at me. And he just said, as I said, very quick, he asked me to lie down and he did a quick physical check, I suppose. And he just sat me down and he said, look, it's breast cancer. As I said at the beginning, you know, we have to wait for the official results. It will be chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery, a year out of your life. And that's when I was sitting there just like, oh, my head spinning and almost, I would say, out of body, you know. And it's been a big, it's a big journey for me to, my journey in life, I think, is coming back and being more embodied. I, you know, I think a lot of us are out of our body a lot of the yeah. times, you know, because of trauma and pain. We're sort of up in our heads, we're up here. So I was totally out of my body. But I remember saying to the nurse when he left the room, will I lose my hair? Because I had loads of hair at the time. As I said, it was the only thing I could relate to. Um, she was wonderful. And she hoped, I remember I stumbled out the door of the clinic, stumbled out a back door, like those tears. Got to my car and I was just so glad. It might sound strange. I was so glad I was meeting a friend that it wasn't family. It might sound strange, but I would have felt the sense of responsibility going, oh my God, I can't tell my mother. I can't tell my sister. It's going to change their world. So it was wonderful to meet someone who cared for me, but also was you know um what's the word sort of as well separate in her own way very no emotional attachment to family the yeah, emotional thing to yeah. family and she ended up being a wonderful rock to me like but oh, she was someone God. who just appeared in my life a year or two earlier so the right people were there the coming yeah yeah and um it all went into a little bit of a, a like a washing machine after that <laughs> for a while but then eventually the peace the peace came over how me. did the peace and can you remember when you say that peace came, can you remember what, what triggered or how that peace arrived in, through, in you, in your mindset and in your body and your spirit? Yeah, I think it was a gradual process and it was only at the beginning, Roisin, because like this is still, for me, it's an ongoing, I, I, I sort of see in life, we're always going through layers and layers and layers mm -hmm to get back to who we are because that's the biggest thing I've learned we're undoing yeah. all of what we believe we are but I think it happened gradually in my home I can't I can just remember lying on the couch one day after treatment and I the fire lit I'd come in my sister I was alone in my house and I just loved I really needed and I need that now an awful lot of space in my life I need a lot of um I just have been so overstimulated for years and I just I can't explain it other than to say something in me knew this is a more natural state, even though I was going through treatment, this less stimulated, calm, safe. I felt safe is another word. I'd never really felt safe. Now, not right. physically unsafe. I suppose I'd felt emotionally unsafe. I'd often because I suppose I never had very good boundaries in my life. I was always felt I need to be doing, I need to be making other people happy. There was a pattern that started in me as a child or before in all of, we all have our own unique yeah, we stories yeah, that we, we have do. to unpack and unravel and figure out for ourselves. I can only speak for myself, but, but something in that time at home sort of just was like, the, I was just like, I was given a glimpse of this is who you really are. Mm. It's a glimpse of it. It's gone. Oh, this feels good. This this has to. It's strange that I'm lying here during cancer treatment, but I feel good. I feel safe. I feel relaxed. I feel. I started growing little. I'd be wandering into my garden. I grew wheat grass to take little wheat grass shots. I had little plants around the house. Just something very natural and organically happened, and then. I think that's the key. Once you once you sort of tap in, I, I really I'd read this um, or not read. I listened to all during that time. I listened. I was just drawn to self-help, to beautiful teachers, to beautiful books. And it just sort of it was like a flame. A light was lit or a spark. And then it just um, expanded out in my life. I don't take great credit for doing anything. 
other than I let go. <laughs> was this maybe the first time in your life, like many women, that you started to sort of honor you, Celine O'Donovan, and maybe for the first time, maybe prioritize and put self care into your life of who Celine O'Donovan is? Yeah, but it was a start. And I will say just for anyone listening who may be going through or has gone through cancer or any other devastation, I'm very, that's why I wrote that in the title of the book, because as you said at the beginning, you know, we all, this is the journey of life. I believe yeah. that nobody escapes that. But um, what I would say is after, so I went through all of that treatment and we've described all of that and the peace and the calm. Then what happened is, this is the interesting part, um, because yes, something had been lit in me, but the treatment finished. I suffered huge fatigue afterwards, which again, I'm grateful for, because otherwise I would have ran back again. And I did try to run back to my job because still, I was still in the programming of, well, how do I live now? It, once treatment was over, it's very, it was the most difficult, difficult part of all of this. And I've met other Why? women. Yeah, because you're held in that system of whether you like it or not, you're sort of held in it. And then you're out of it because obviously they move on to the next person. And there you are. I'm not the person I was, but the only world I know is the job and the life I live, but I'm not able for that. But where do I go? What do I do? And I felt lost, so lost. But the one big thing I would say again is once you I sort of set that intention I, I suppose I took a leap of faith I call it a leap of faith I knew I couldn't go back I just knew I couldn't and once I sort of said and I did I sort of said look show me the way like I I, I was sort of grasping at anything new and out of the blue not out of the blue but this woman appeared just this is an interesting just to show if you take this leap of faith in your life I'd say it to anyone listening who really really knows they need to change and they you know um, and, and you take this leap of faith and trust and ask, you will always be shown, always. I guarantee you that 100%. Um, maybe not be easy all the time, but you will always be shown the way that is, you know, for your highest good. So a woman out of, that I hadn't seen in about 20 years showed up. I bumped into her one day and I was ta telling her my story. And again, I was really stressed at the time again because I was, I can't go back. I don't know what to do. Where do I go? What do I do? And she said, you know, a good friend of hers who was had been a teacher of mine in my school years ago, now retired. Had She said she's running a course based on a book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. And she said, it might be something you'd like. And I said, but I'm not an artist. And she said, it's not about that. It's about creativity. It's about coming together. It's about spirituality. It's about really getting in touch with yourself. And it's a nice group of women who are meeting. every. Maybe it's a way for you to figure out what's next and I wasn't able to do anything else because I'd no energy and that changed everything because I said yes to that that was the importance as well I could have said no I said yes and I took a risk I took I said yes to everything that was new and sort of felt okay I, I trust I started to trust you know myself and that voice inside so she that I went to the beautiful course and we did lots of exercises it was very nurturing a lovely group of women in her house by the edge of the sea every week oh. and it was her who said to me one day over a coffee she said Celine since you've come to this course all your you keep talking about what you're learning through cancer and I can see it in you and I can see how it's changing you for the better would you think of writing anything down about it and I said no sure I'm not Oh, you know, I just sort of laugh. I, you know, something obviously went in and I left her house. This is the interesting thing. I came home and I literally opened my laptop and it was like someone turned the tap on and I just, it just poured out of me for six months. And it was the draft of this, my second book, Gifts from the Devastation, which is my story. Um, so it just shows that, you know, that went on and I wrote another book and there was a whole series of events that have led me to where I am now and continuing but it just shows once you are willing we always have a choice I'm a big believer in that doesn't mean the choice is always easy but we always have a choice in our lives and uh, yeah there's a lot of power in letting go and you know sometimes you just got it's, it's sometimes I think the hardest thing is actually fully letting go 
we can't, might say, oh, I've let go, but really surrendering to the words, let go. Yes. yes. There is a moment, but they can, it's, for me, I don't know what it was for mm. you, but for me, that surrender and letting go has so much power and trust yes. Yes. within ourselves to trust the pathway uh, of letting go and that power and that trust in ourselves, because you have to trust yourself to actually let go and walk that path mm -hmm. without any attachments to outcomes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm still doing it. You know, everything I talk about this, it, there isn't a sort of a destination. This is the, as I see it, this is the journey of learning how to live life as we were intended to live it we're undoing yeah. everything like it's so amazing to me now and every day and like you said so there's many things I'm still surrendering and letting go oh I mean, yeah we've, we've had years <laughs> and years and years but, but we'll be doing I, it every day until we die yeah on this but the planet. magic like you said the magic for me is and it's still a work in progress and I still my old ways will kick in you know I call it that like the ego self the personality I have sort of all I can say is it's like once you sort of connect this higher a sense of there's something greater and you really you start to work with it and I'm I, and I wrote a, a section on this at the end of the book about co-creating your life so it's not that you just sit back and go okay I do nothing here just life comes at me you're mm -hmm. you're there's this beautiful act of surrender isn't it it's sort of you're surrendered but you're also taking action so for me the biggest way the biggest gift and how I l endeavor to live every day is in that intuitive sort of flow. So I'm always, and the more you practice it, isn't it? You know, yeah. the more you sort of really start to tune in. So I only, only um, take action and live and do things that come from that place. That, that is my, that's my GPS. And it is when you start to live that way now it doesn't mean people won't always you know you have to still we're still in the world and we're still in I'm still living in the system and everything that I was in so it does take time and we have to be gentle and kind with ourselves but yeah. once you start to live this way it's just pure magic it's magic it's challenging too but it's, it's very magic challenging. very challenging but the magic there's magic yeah. too that makes it all worthwhile isn't there I don't know what it's like for you but for me when I surrender my mind is quiet. Mm. There's no clutter. There's no jabber or clutter. It's quiet and I'm centered. Yeah. And I can hear my own voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm in that present moment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's and something. Yeah. Just, awesome. yeah. You're in yeah. the. I You're in the zone. Yeah, like there's lots of different ways, oneness, unity, the zero yeah. point in the zone, in the flow. Connected to the fem to the to the the femininity and to the divine feminine. As a woman, that's how I just yes. how I define it. Yeah. When I surrender and I'm I'm quiet in it. And how I do that is I'm quiet and my mind's quiet. My tone of voice is soft and mm. gentle, loving, caring and my spoken word matches my tone of voice and the language and what I'm using in my head and therefore my emotions are aligned with my thoughts and my spoken words mm. and then my behaviors are matching that to mm. get the outcomes that yeah. I desire in life yeah yeah and when you think about it going back you asked to stop and you were given them two opportunities to stop and maybe you didn't stop after the car accident so the cancer was you asked the universe to stop yeah exactly stop you didn't hear they stopped you didn't hear we you. Are. <laughs> and then the second time here's another one. and it's like being kind and gentle with ourselves and for me it's like connecting to that divine feminine and when you think about in ireland we were talking the other day that for me, the define feminine, Ireland is like for me a feminine country because mm. when you think all through our culture and our, our poems, our literature, our songs, and everything, it's the, the, the authors all describe Ireland as a woman. Mm. 
And for me, that's, I think, you know, to me, I, that's just think about Ireland and I just think of, oh, yeah. and the wonderful warriors and the wonderful women that we had through our Irish history as well. Yeah. And Ireland, I've heard said that is one of the, the one of the spiritual heart centers, I think, in, in yeah. the world. And I, I feel that now myself, I feel a really, I really feel this powerful, like you said, divine, feminine, gentle, strong, creative, intuitive, in tune sort of energy rising in the country. And I mm. think that is big part of why I'm here, why a lot of us, most of us are, you know, we're all here for different roles. And, um, but I, I, I felt as well, a very strong connection to nature in the last yeah. few years. I just, it's just like taken me over. I, I had never realized the power and how great a teacher it is and the importance of connecting with the land and the energy of it. So yeah, I think we're in a really exciting, exciting time and it is time for the divine feminine yeah. to rise because we've been living in and I wrote a little bit of, and it's funny because I wrote started writing the book back in 2017 when I left that woman's house and I wrote about all of this in you know before everything we've been through in the last few years and then I ended up editing it during lockdown but I talked about the divine feminine in it and I was talking about because it was just sort of coming through me and I just knew this shift, it was time for this shift on the planet from this real patriarchal, and it's not being negative, we have the masculine and feminine energies in us, but we've been out of balance and the world has been out of balance. So I'm really excited about, yeah, the time ahead, and I, I don't feel any way fearful, I think this is a really powerful time for yeah, creating. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah the and world. And when I say, country, just... yeah define feminine and define femininity I don't I I actually I, you know I'm not all into this new this new age feminine feminine feminist I believe that you know to be a feminist is to support men as well as oh, just absolutely. the way that men support women yeah, and that yeah. we're equal and I know you you, you yeah absolutely we are equal yeah. so yeah. only because we talk about the define feminine you know well we're, we're we're women so we are connected to that femininity and yeah. just like men are connecting to that masculinity yeah. and yeah maybe we should go back to basics that women be women and men be men and and have that you know celebrate that yeah well we chose to come in a certain body and yeah absolutely I have I lived out of my masculine energy all my life and I needed it I still need it because we don't get I did it for done. 20 odd years yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> I had so to it was how yeah. I survived <laughs> yeah and men have the divine feminine I yeah beautiful you know I there's I what I found really interesting in the last couple of years with the various men and women and new communities and people I've connected with I'm meeting these amazing men who are really mm. masculine and strong and in their masculine energy energy but are so connected to the feminine yeah. energy within them and it's just wow I was going this is amazing like and then seeing women you know so it's really about coming back into balance but as you said like I can I'm in a female body and nothing again you know whatever you whatever way you and it was to breast cancer your... what what stopped you yeah yeah, yeah. you think that the the, yeah. the purpose of breast is, is yeah. feeding yeah. and nourishing and yeah. breast is everything to do with fem being feminine yeah 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 absolutely yeah you know but again it's whatever you know I'm not whatever way you choose to express yourself in your life this is and this is a key for me in where we are in personally and collectively is it's I've come to a place where and I think there's so much division in the world we won't go yeah. you know I know this isn't the topic for here <laughs> but I think it's it, you know it's reflected individually and collectively yeah. everything that's going on and we're at a time, I believe, of unity and the and also valuing diversity so that each yeah. of us, this is the key. And, and I because I don't buy into division or separation no, I anymore. Don't either. No. And I think that that's a message I would say here because I passionately yeah. believe this. There's there's a lot of power, you know, let's say forces that would like us to be divided and separated. I've I've no, no <laughs> my we are all one in my view and we are just here to express ourselves uniquely yeah. and every person I have met in the last couple of years nearly everyone is the exact same but we are led you to believe we are led to believe something different but you get out and start meeting people and connecting with people and you start to connect with people on a very deep level and you see yeah we're all the same we're, we're all the human beings the yeah 
And we all come from the same place, whatever you view that to be. And we're all a spark of it, a spark of light. And we all have different roles and we have different ways of expressing ourselves. And yeah, we all have a purpose. We all have a divine. This is what and I know you probably share. Mm. We all have a very divine purpose and reason. And we all have different gifts Mm. and different abilities and different roles and functions that we have Mm. to do. Mm. And. I think the world, I I do feel the world, the the unity, the love that is going to come back into the world because we were just so dense and we we were and we came very disconnected from ourselves and that's what I hear about what you were saying is mm. when you said you intuitively knew when you said I went into the I need to stop I wish I could be that person I could stop that was your intuition and the and you and your spirit telling you that you know you want to reconnect with you Celine O'Donovan again mm. Mm, yeah and we all will get those calls because i i wrote an article a while back and i and, and to me it sums up what this is all about i called it a jur- the journey of remembering because that is what oh. we are we are well i was definitely and still am on this uh journey of remembering who we are i think that's this is how i understand it like you know whenever whatever way we come into this earth we sort of this amnesia happens and then we spend our lives waking up. Now, some people maybe were from a very young age. I think younger people being born are more in tune with, you know, this. they're plugged in inside. Most of us, and I spent most of my life plugged in outside because that is what I was told you do. And that is, you know, you plug into the outside world and let everybody, the education system, the governments, the politicians, the, your parents, everyone tell you who you are and what is right for you. And that was the shift for me. And again, I wrote a little piece in the book about that. I call it inside out living. And it's right. really about plugging back in to your source, to your spirit, to whatever that is. But I can guarantee anyone, once you once that you let go and you sort of plug in there, you'll know. You know, no one can describe it to you, can't they not? Until you experience it. There sometimes isn't words. All I know yeah. is that I am like You're feeling. Whoa. I'm plugged in. Yeah, it's like plugging my phone into the power source. Yeah. Not plugging it in outside. Your power source is inside. It's not outside. The outside only is pulling on your power. So, you know, when you plug in inside, you you suddenly have that's when you start to really tap into your potential, the unlim- unlimited potential. Um and life becomes really it's it's a, it's a roller coaster as you yeah. know, it's a but you're living. You know, you're living through you know, you're facing. And one other thing just I think is a really important part of this journey as well is clearing your trauma or releasing yes. all that old baggage and old emotional stuff that we have been led to believe. And I, I we talked about suppression, emotional suppression it was a huge, huge. And I'm still on that. I've cleared a lot. But you have to do that work because all of the other lovely stuff that you can access you have to go through all that stuff you've suppressed first. So that's where it gets challenging. And but that's I... where the letting go comes in. Yeah. Let it go. And yeah. I want to talk to you because, you know, through your work now, that is how you got to how you were, who you are and what you do. You always were who you were, but how mm. you remembered who you were and became centered and stopped and just recentered yourself to come who you are. You've changed your career. You now are a published author of two very successful books. We'll talk about that in a little second. And you are a holistic therapist, life coach. And you also, um, Celine, you have, I would like to talk about your five key tools of inside living, because we just talked about plugging in from the uh, plugging in from the outside but plugging in from the inside and you talked about the trauma can you talk tell us a little bit not too much but a little mm. bit much because we want people to sign up and and, c- and contact you to find out more but tell us Celine about Celine O'Donovan's five tools of inside living um okay well the it's an inside out living indicator is what I call it and within in the book, I'm not going to go into it. There are actually yeah. 10 steps. It's like a wheel of life. There's 10. So I'll mention five key things, as you asked, just that are important to me. But I suppose how it came about very quickly is as I was changing and as I was writing, I was realizing the things that were making a difference in my life. So one of the things 
we talked about there is and again this is an ongoing process it's not like you do it and you tick it where these are sort of in flow all the time in your life but releasing trauma and expressing you know feeling my life so that's a key thing whether you know and it is letting go but it's also sometimes having to feel things that maybe you didn't even realize were buried deep in you as a child so something might have happened just as a very simple example and someone shouted at you and as a result you when someone shouts you you know develop this adaptive behavior that has held you back in life so one aspect is around I call it emotional ease and learning how to feel and express you know emotions and you may need to I do some work with people around that um then listening to your intuition. So that's a nice benefit of coming out of when you start to clear a lot of old trauma, you start to hear the voice of your intuition and you come to know it. It's a very gentle voice, not a shouting voice. So cultivating that, that's another aspect of it. Look at creativity. So that comes online as a result of, I found um, clearing a lot of my trauma, really getting into listening to my intuition into flow creativity and how you nurture that and that's really who we are we are creators of our lives so i talk you know a lot about that um another aspect as well and it's sort of separate i'm a big sorry these are just broader i suppose messages they're aspects of the two is who you surround yourself with and the yes. surrounding yourself with people who really want the best for you i just believed i should just you know whoever turns up in my life no, you know, that really taking ownership of that and having people in your life who want the best for you. Um, boundaries are another, probably going to go over the but boundaries and, and, and sort of coming out of codependence, coming back, doing the work. So these are all, I'm not saying these are magic bullets overnight, but these are areas of life I needed to focus on. And I, I sort of worked through and talked through in the book. Um, I won't go into all of them here, Roshin, no. because yeah, we never want people the whole other program. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us about your two books, which are the, let's talk first of all about the tapestry of life. Tell us about that book. Okay, so that book came out of it's the tapestry of life. It's a big book of fiction and it's about the power of community is probably the yeah. simplest way to put it. And how it came about was I wrote a draft of this book, Gifts from the Devastation. As I said, um, after that, uh, after doing that course, I brought it to a publisher in Galway. I didn't know what to do. I'd never published right. anything. Yeah. So I found a publisher in Galway and I brought it to her. And she said, oh, will you leave the draft of Gifts from the Devastation? I didn't have a title for it at that time. And I'll read it and I'll, we'll meet. I said, great. Came back to her a week later. And she said, you know, I'm going to say something to you that might surprise you or but just hear me out. So she said, look, you can write. I really enjoyed reading that. But would you think of writing fiction? So that threw me. I was it took me a year, a good few years to even figure out that one. I was I've just written my story about cancer and how it changed me. And here's someone suggesting I write fiction. But I didn't know what else to do. And I knew so little. So I just put my faith in her and I left her house. And this was an interesting thing. As I was driving home, all these little voices, little voices like of characters, I realized, started talking in my head. So I went home and again, I was off on sick leave still at this time. So this was, you know, I would, this transition I talked about was really interesting how it was unfolding. So I started writing a book, knew nothing about writing fiction, knew nothing about writing anything really. Um, but I went and did a writing course. So this all helped me. Um, so basically it's a book that's set in Galway. It's three generations of women oh. who meet each other sort of unexpectedly. And it takes place over the period of two weeks and it's how they influence each other and how they help change each other's lives, because that is what happened to me. And it ended up being fictional. But, you know, I don't know if anything is really fiction because it was loosely based on the women that had come into my life mm. and just how we're all part. I love the tapestry, the idea that, you know, life is a tapestry and each of us is a very unique and essential thread in the tapestry that makes up all of life and existence and how we all weave in and out of each other's lives so that's that book and it was an important thing for me to write I didn't realize until afterwards I needed to sort of yeah sort of process and understand what was going on um, and it's, it, yeah. you know what when you think about for anyone but you'll get you'll have understand it's written about Galway yeah 
It's based in Galway. Based and, in Galway, yeah, written by a Galway woman about mm. three Galway about three Galway women. Mm. Mm. And that tapestry of life, I'm really looking forward to that. The gift of devastation, as we said, mm. that, that came from your um your 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 journey. I, I had a cliche the journey, but like the I know there's no other way really. Is there, <laughs> there, I know I keep saying that word. But, yeah. yeah. Um, it came from your lived experience of the gift that you have from the devastation of discovering that you had breast cancer. And you talk about that gift. And, you know, when you think about it, you are now helping healing and navigating and guiding other women and men through the gifts of devastation that could appear in their lives. As you said, no one escapes such. Yeah. None of us escape uh, trauma, illness, death, or any or other life situations. And, you know, I just think that that has a really, when you think about it, you, did, you didn't see yourself as a victim of cancer. You saw that as a gift for yourself. And now you have transformed your life. Is that even a cliche? Transform. You I know, have. I know. You have re really now sort of let go and taken control. Because even in letting go, it's about like taking control, isn't it? Yeah. If you say yeah. letting go, yeah. because you are you are actually living your life purpose, mm. and you're yeah. trusting in that purpose. Yeah. You're helping everyone else. How can people get? get in touch with your books and where can they source them and buy them? Okay, well, I suppose the most direct way, I have a website, selenodonovan.com, which if... Um, I'll put them I'll in put, the description. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I suppose the books are available in selected bookshops around the country, but they're available on Amazon, you know, book depository. All of the links are through my website. I also have a mailing list as well, which um, I'd love. Again, I can. I, it's through my website as well. If people want to join that, I sort of communicate regularly about different things I'm doing. Um, I also have an audiobook, so I recorded and narrated oh, an audiobook version of Gifts from the Devastation myself, and I recorded in my homemade studio here under a. A sheepskin jacket that was <laughs> that was the advice I got to have that sort of soundproofing effect but it's actually I'm selling it directly so that's also the link is on my website um and also it's available on audible so people can download it there so um yeah or everything really I suppose is through all the links really are through my website I might send you give you my link tree as well you know that yes. will, um so yeah um, lots of different ways to connect with me. I think that's it. And you're on social point. media. You are. I am on social media. I'm on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel, which I'm sort of. I like interviews like this. I've quite a lot of interviews done. A lot of different just topics I've chosen to talk about. Um, as you said, I you know I see everything is evolving, and I, I my big thing is I just share. Um, my journey and my experiences to support others that's also led me into sort of um healing work that I was doing years ago or started and probably wasn't ready for so that's sort of evolved into as you said I trained as a life coach but I don't really work in that way it's quite an intuitive way so I do some sound healing some Reiki some intuitive guidance and coaching and I've been doing it distance as well as in person so again um one you know all my all my contact details anyways are on the website so or social media yeah and social media well it's certainly be it's been a, a real pleasure listening to an ordinary woman who is doing such extraordinary work in you know helping people feel it to heal it and stop burying their feelings uh, and pushing through i think that is and seeing the gifts through devastation and in when we do that, we see the beautiful colors of the tapestry of life through nature, through connecting with ourselves and connecting with other people in our communities. And, and another thing that I, I, I got from this, sometimes people, we meet people for a reason. They could come into our life, maybe just for one meeting and we never see them again, but they had an important impact in our lives. And that's what, 
I, what I'm getting from your books is the gift of devastation and the tapestry of life. Yeah, because it yeah. is full of different colors, and you, you know the dark colors, the gray colors, and then you have the the beautiful bright colors of that transformation and yeah. that connection. Yeah, and if I could just say one thing, I suppose to leave as well that the viewers or their listeners with is the biggest shift for me as well has been about in feeling your life. I think we have been so conditioned not to feel your power is in feeling your life and I don't mean going around crying all day every day there was nothing wrong with that either if you need to I mean it in a deeper sense of energetically feeling and being in your body and feeling everything so what happens then because we are really energy in a physical body spiritual energy however you want to look at it but once you start to peel through the layers and start to feel you really get to navigate your life in a very powerful way yeah you will feel some things that are very challenging yes you will yeah. feel things that are very sad but you feel them and, and, and the key to feeling and energy is it's always in motion it's when we suppress that we get stuck and we suffer and we're in pain and that's what I did for years and I yeah. didn't know that you know this is not meant to be stuck in me I can feel something now and I felt something very painful last week really painful but have moved through me quickly because I've been working on this since I've been sick. So I felt that. But a few days later, I was feeling great, you know, and I hear constantly and life is meant to be that, you know, I'm, I'm so passionate about that now. It's not meant to be this sort of mental exercise or something we go through. We are energetic beings. So I say that and if you take that leap and really choose to live your life bravely in this way, the rewards are beyond anything um, and this is what life is meant to be in my in from my uh, perspective and experience so far so yeah take that leap it's so worth it so worth it and when you think about it you know anyone who has who doesn't have challenges in life have no you know challenges in life really shows us ourselves how strong we are yeah. how independent we are and how you know that we trust ourselves and yeah. you know they make us stronger. And yeah. I know that's another cliche, but you know what doesn't kill us, just make us stronger. Mm. But that's where that self-confidence, that self-belief, that sense of personal empowerment comes to is exactly through feeling the, ch the, the challenges and feeling it to heal it and to get, get through and understand that you've got to get, here's a life challenge, you've got to go through it, under it or around it, but you've got to get to the other side of it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know, waking up these abilities that we have, like this is what I'm learning. We have these innate abilities that haven't really come online, yeah. let's say, and they start to come online. And once you start to use certain things like going, OK, if I feel something, it's not going to kill me. No, I didn't know that. I didn't feel anything for years. <laughs> so, you know, even that in itself to go, if I feel something, I'm not going to get lost in it. And no. I think most of us believe we will. And this is why we suppress. And this is how we live. So in such a disempowered state, I lived and I meet so many people now because I was like that for long. And, and I don't it's not it's not a criticism. It's, it's a normal way. This is how we've been led to believe we are. But we're not. We're not, and I really and that, believe that's we're waking changing up that. now. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. it started to change before the pandemic, uh, that the, the closest all down. It, uh, it really did. I think it was happening before that, before everybody mm. saying that the two years of restrictions and lockdowns that we it happened. Then I saw it starting to actually unwrap and uncover itself that people were starting to reconnect to ourselves again and uh, reconnect to our creativity because mm. I think that we're all creative yeah and it was a collective devastation I, I don't think it's any accident my book ended up coming out no. around this time because that no. was my individual devastation but collectively we are in in so many different ways there's so much going on but we have to collectively I feel do that for us as a humanity to um yeah to really come online and and live as we're meant to and yeah and Celine keep doing <laughs> keep being the ordinary woman who is doing the extraordinary things and uh, I look forward to hearing more of the work that you're doing in the future and, and you'll be on with us a lot more in the future as well on Confident Women Island I think you're just exactly along with the other women I've had on the embodiment of what Confident Women Island is all about.
Thank you so much, Roshi. Celine O'Donovan, I will have all your links to your website to, and even if we could put the link to your blog that you wrote in that, so I think that would be very important for, for many people and to your social media in the description box below and to your YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much, Roshin. Really enjoyed Aline the conversation. Thank you so much indeed.